Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Guide podcast. I'm Daniel, machinery reporter here at Farmer's Guide. And I'm Greg, I'm a director here at Farmer's Guide. And today we're going to talk about Agritechnica. Let's get straight to it. Daniel, what is Agritechnica? Agritechnica is Disney World for machinery nerds. It's a huge agricultural event that occurs every two years in Hanover in Germany. Mm -hmm. And it's the biggest agricultural machinery show there is. Every manufacturer will be there, you name it. If it's tractors, implements, software increasingly these days, they will, they will have a presence at Agritechnica. It's a huge site where it is. I mean, you might know the Birmingham NEC. Yeah. Pretty big, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it's about 180,000 square metres, the NEC. Hanover, Agritechnica, 400,000 square metres. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's massive. It's split up over 20 or so halls, just... It's the place to be, really. If you're, if you're into agricultural machinery, yeah, it's the place to be. I'm guessing comfy shoes are in order then. Yes, you're going to be covering a lot of steps if you're going there, especially if you've got a few different people you wanted to see. Mm. Yeah, you want to make sure you've got good shoes and a, and a plan of where you're going. Yeah, because otherwise you're going to be ping-ponging across a really long distance. Yeah, so, yeah. well, I know how confusing the NEC can be, so I'm guessing this is going to be even more so. Yes, yeah. Um, and it's a really exciting year for Agritechnica. Mm -hmm. um, they they set up themes each year for, for what they're going to be covering. And what is year's theme? It's touch smart efficiency. Right, okay? okay. So it's kind of a real tech forward looking um, view on, on agricultural machinery, which is a lot of what I've been seeing in the lead up to Agritechnica. So mm. as you're aware, I've been doing lots of visits all over Europe and in the UK, visiting manufacturers to see what they're going to be bringing to Agritechnica. And I would say the updates across the board fit into one big theme, which is efficiency. Yep. Efficiency is the big theme. But within that, that's kind of split up into, in my eyes, four different things. There's automation and autonomy. Mm -hmm. So slowly manufacturers are moving towards more and more driver assist in the cab. They're taking these incremental steps towards full autonomy of tractors. I don't think it's that far away before we see that. Right. Um, and you know, clever controls on the implements themselves, you know, following tractors in a, in a smart and intelligent way. There's alternative fuels. That's another big thing. So we've seen the Fent E100 series, so a fully electric tractor that's actually available now, yeah. like made its way to market. It's not, not a prototype. I've been in one exactly like, to step into, it's exactly like a normal tractor, um, but yeah, just a little bit quieter. But who's gonna buy an electric tractor, do you think? Oh, Could at the moment, yeah. On an arable farm? Um, no, I think not, not anytime soon. I think really they've, they've got their place now. Uh, realistically, it's going to be in equestrian settings, yeah. um, grounds care kind of stuff, vineyards, yeah. where you're, you're, you know, you've, they've built their narrow version, so I think that it has applications there, and municipal settings, so sort of council work almost, mm -hmm. like where this kind of greener approach is quite important for some of the targets they need to meet. Runtime, I think, will be a little bit touchy for, for you know, hard drafting arable yeah, so work at the moment. Less intensive farming, yeah. more. But on, an, on alternative fuels, we also have methane tractors. Yep. So New Holland have got a methane tractor, T7, on the market now. Um, that is something that's much more viable, I think, for an arable farmer, especially mm -hmm. if you've got an AD plant either on site or nearby, you've got good access to the gas. Um, and on top of that, there's the hydrogen tractors, which I think are still a little bit further away, but it looks like, you know, manufacturers are starting to mm. kind of push that a little bit harder as well. I think a lot of it's still prototype concept level, but there is a lot of interest in that. Um, it's, it's going to be a bit of a race, I think, between those three technologies, a bit like VHS, Betamax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. show your age. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, so I think there is a, there's going to be a race there and who knows who will win. Excellent. So alternative fuels, that's the second thing that I saw. Uh, connectivity is a big, big one on the third one. At every visit I've been to, there's been a lot of talk around the manufacturer's platforms. So they're, they're telematics, the data collection, you know, down to square meters of like what's, what's been applied here, what was the yield here, like mapping everything automatically for your AB lines, all this kind of like stuff. But really importantly, bringing it all into one like platform, yeah. one portal that 
I think they're really pushing for kind of plug and play as well. So one thing you just use, you've got it on your tractor, implement, phone, tablet, whatever. It's there, it's good to go. Um, really useful for operators just being sent work and farm managers being able to manage fleets from an office. Mm. There's a lot of that kind of push towards these platforms. Um, and finally, another big push towards operator comfort. Operator comfort, that's across the board, big cab updates, improvements to you know, the, the size of the cabs, so cabs mm -hmm. are getting bigger, more glass in the cabs, better sort of upholstery materials, massage seats, you know, at the high level stuff, you yeah. know, making sure that the operator is sat in a really comfortable environment. Absolutely, yeah. So, obviously you've been out a lot over the last few months. Mm. Are there any particular machines that have really sparked your interest that you'll see at Agritechnica? Well, we, obviously we mentioned the, the electric tractor from Fent, which yeah. while not a, um, maybe not so big for, for arable farmers and like for farmers in general at the moment, it's still interesting to see that yeah. kind of tech making its way. But in terms of stuff that I think really does have um, practical kind of more practical applications, I did quite like the new Optum series from Case. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, uh, an upgrade. Well, an upgrade. It's a it's a power bump to their current Optum yeah. series. It's their European tractor. They call it. So obviously they've got the Magnum, which is more of their American market tractor, which is like just a heavy drafting. It's a big tractor that can just do good pulling. The Optum in my eyes, is a bit more of a sort of refined version. Yeah. It uses the same engine, but it's, interestingly, it's on a slightly longer wheelbase, but overall the tractor is substantially shorter. Um, it's just like quite a compact design, more suited to the European market where tractors have to move around from field to field yeah. and actually use the road, good at hauling, good at, you know, actually working tools in the field. Um, but yeah, it was just really impressive, the kind of refinements that they've made to that platform making it suitable for driving. What about the uh, that John Deere? I mean, that's quite some machine. The 9RX? Yeah. Yes. So that was, um, I think it's fair to call that a monster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head, but I think 913 horsepower it, mm -hmm. it goes up to. Um, it was a 18-litre engine from six cylinders, which is always, always kind of like, when I hear that, it blows my mind. It means each cylinder is three litres. Yeah. So each cylinder is like a bucket, I think, you know, <laughs> huge, huge power. I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a bit of a, it's a party, <laughs> it's not a party piece, but it's, it's a, a real showstopper, let's mm -hmm. say, a tractor like that. How many of those are really suitable for what kind of farms in the UK are going to be using those? It's kind of hard to say. But in terms of like, you know, raw power, I mean, and size, there's nothing that beats stuff like that. And I'm sure that will be at Agritechnica. They will yeah, be able to show that off. A lot of people would like to see that. And yeah, John Deere also, I think, have their um, first sort of fully electric tractor right. that's going to be there as well. So that's probably something to keep an eye out for as well. Um, but again, that just speaks to this kind of general theme of, I think something you'll see a lot of at, at Agritechnica is a lot of tech startups mm -hmm. effectively that are there because of this touch smart efficiency kind of theme and, and the way that a lot of the updates and upgrades these days are software based and how do we get the most out of the data that's being collected by farmers? Because there's been a big push over the past few years for farmers to be collecting all this data, to be making sure you know, you, you know exactly what you've put, where you've put it, when, all of it and how much you're getting out of it. Lots of data being collected all the time but is it being used in the most effective yeah. way? Because it's one thing to collect data and it's another thing to use it. And I think there are quite a few kind of companies starting to, to twig onto that and like sh hopefully showing farmers how to make the most out of the data that mm -hmm. they, they have been collecting all of this time. So I think that's gonna be, and that all, that all boils down to that efficiency point, Yeah. right? It's, it's another way to get an extra percent here and an extra percent there, which, with the way input costs are and you know the prices that you can make on some of the products that farmers are producing you know being let's be honest quite low sometimes yeah. all of these extra percents here and there are adding up to hopefully make a, a, a bit of a difference for farmers mm, absolutely it sounds really exciting though because obviously it's been a, a bit of a tough time in agriculture over mm -hmm. the last well last few years really mm. um, <clears throat> and while we're not going to talk about the government today 
it's um, it's really nice to see that some of the manufacturers are really pushing some really nice new launches, including efficiency and how to make the farms more profitable or yeah. profitable at all. Yes, yeah, exactly. And I think it's important for the industry as a whole to keep that that evolution going. I was recently at an event with Class, yeah. and I was speaking with their, I think it's senior VP, Trevor Tyrrell, and his thing, his whole thing around Class is full steam ahead. Yeah. Like, you know, farmers have to keep farming, we have to keep making food, people have to keep eating. Absolutely. It doesn't matter, like, really, sometimes what the market's doing, we have to keep going. And I think that's a really positive feeling that I felt this year from within the industry is like, yes, not everything's perfect. Yes, sometimes it's really difficult, but there's a real resilience to it that I think is 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 good to see and hear. Yeah, I think that's the British way, though. Yes, yes things are tough, but let's just get on with it. Yes, keep calm and carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So that's really exciting, and it sounds like Agritech is going to be quite a, quite the event. Yes, I think it will be. Yes. yes. So I think make sure you know make sure you've got a good plan, good shoes, and you know I, I'm sure you'll have a good time whilst you're there. Perfect. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much for listening to our podcast today. Um, if there's anything else you want us to cover, do let us know. If not, we'll see you at the next podcast. See you then.